back for another video. I tried to do this video yesterday, but like most of the videos that I do, I am refilming it. So I don't have everything that I had yesterday, but it'll work out just fine. So we are trying to lower our food bill. I said that in some of my previous videos. Hi, Hero. Hi. He has to go out, but it's raining because we're getting the outer bands of a tropical storm and he doesn't like the rain. So he's very conflicted right now with what he wants to do. So anyway, we are trying to lower our food bill and it's become a huge process to me. I've been looking up, researching things, and I have looked into bulk before, bulk buying, but I was never big into it. I never did it, the not the correct way, but I never really got into it enough to really figure it out. Now I am getting into it, now I am figuring it out, and it's definitely saving us money. Um, in the long run, we're not having to buy things as often as we do. So I want to share with you guys what we do for bulk buying, how we store it and all, some of the things that we've come across that have been a little hard and some of the things that have been easier. Let's start off with one of the main things about bulk buying and that is storing it all. You have to figure out where you're going to store it all. You have to figure out where what you're going to store it all in. There is like this whole process behind it which um, I never really thought about before. So as we started buying things, and I'll show you guys in a minute, the one big box of 25 pound flour that I bought, I've been using it so it's not as big as it was when I bought it, um, but we bought something like that and it came in a cardboard box, it came in a bag in a cardboard box, but it came in a cardboard box nonetheless, and that's something that I can't really store here. I have to worry about it getting wet or I have to worry about the animals getting into it. So a cardboard box is not really something that I can do. Since it's 25 pounds of flour, that would be a lot of mason jars if I tried to put it all in mason jars. I do use mason jars, but not for like the heavy bulk stuff. So I went online, I looked at a lot of stores, and I found these food grade container buckets. I found these off of Home Depot. I had to wait like a month for them to come in stock. I could only grab two, but then they were out of stock. Um, but again, I got them off of Home Depot, and that was the cheapest site that I seen. I did look at a bunch of restaurant websites where, like, people that own restaurants would buy their stuff from, but shipping was expensive. Three buckets, shipping was, like, $15, which, that's really expensive for me, at least. You could buy more of these buckets at Home Depot for that price. So I went with Home Depot. Sorry, I keep backing up because the dog is now laying. Oh, now he's getting up with Home Depot because I get free shipping with Home Depot. I normally spend their, I think their minimum budget for free shipping is like 35 bucks and I normally spend that anyway so I went with Home Depot. So this is the way that I'm storing anything heavy and bulk like my 25 pound flour that I have and I do have lids for these coming in the mail it's just they're not here yet so working with what I got. And then I use things like mason jars. I am not a canner. I have never canned food before. I'm not into that whole process. It's way too much for me. I don't understand it. Um, but I do use mason jars to store things that I buy in bulk that are not like the 25 pound sugar. Um, so these are just nuts that I put in here. And then we have a lot of rice because we eat rice often. So we have a lot of jars of rice down our basement actually and we just bring them up when we need them. I've never seen a rice bag that was resealable so we normally use mason jars for that too. One problem that I'm coming across with the mason jars is when I started buying jars probably a year ago now, they were pretty cheap. You could find them for pretty a reasonable price. But now they are so expensive. And I don't know if it's because everybody's buying these jars and they're stockpiling or everybody has, a lot of people have gardens now and they're canning their own food and all, but these are so expensive now. Even if you don't get like the Mason brand, you just get an off brand, they're so expensive. So um, this is what I have for now, but I don't know if I'm going to continue using the glass jars just because of price. Um, again, I'm trying to lower my food bill, and if I have to pay for jars, like expensive jars, I can't do that. 
Another way that I store food is actually in these plastic containers I got from Dollar Tree. I bought these a long time ago and they have been holding up really well. They wash really well. Um, so this is another way that I store like sugar, brown sugar, cereal. I put cereal in these. My only thing about these is that they say they're a canister, but they don't say that they're food safe on there. So I'm not even sure if these are food safe, to be honest with you guys. I would assume so because it has the cups on the side. Like it tells you how many cups are there, how many milliliters are in there. Um, so I would assume that they are food safe. But on like the mason jars and these big buckets which say they're food safe, these Dollar Tree containers don't say they're food safe. So, and I still have a sticker on there from when I bought it. And it doesn't say anything about being food safe. But the measurements lead me to believe it is food safe, so I have been using these too. And they do hold up well. It has been holding up well at least. So I like them. Here are the three ways right now that I am storing bulk food that we buy. Plastic, glass, and buckets. I think the buckets are going to be really fun, but I think they're going to be a hassle to store. I'm not sure where I'm going to be able to store these five gallon buckets, but we'll find a place for them. I just got them in the mail yesterday, by the way, so I haven't done anything with them yet. Um, I did buy a freezer back in March, but it's still not here. It keeps saying it's coming next month, and then the next month, and the next month. When I get the freezer, that would be another way that I would store bulk. And right now that you truly see the ways that I store um, my bulk food, I'm going to tell you about the places that I buy bulk from. So when the freezer comes, I already have a farm around here, a local farm, that I'm going to be buying my meat from. But I know not everybody can do that. Not everybody has a farm around them. I know growing up in the city, I definitely didn't have a farm around me. So I would definitely suggest, and I'm sure everybody knows this already, shop the deals at your local grocery store. I know our local grocery store does the 10 for 10 on cans. And I think they do like a 3 for 10 on specialty meats sometimes. So definitely shop your grocery store if you can. And then I also order from nuts.com. This is not sponsored. They don't know I'm telling you guys this. But I am going to recommend it because I do find things in bulk cheaper there. And that's what this whole thing is about, right? Saving money even if it's in the long run. Even if you have to put down a large amount now, you're saving in the long run. So I bought from nuts.com. They do ship overnight, but I guess because shipping has been weird recently, I didn't get my order for three days. Now, everything except for one thing was okay. I did write them about the one thing that was messed up. I'm still waiting to hear back though. But they shipped everything in like a box, a cooler box with ice packs and all. But just because it was so long that it was sitting in a truck, it melted. Just be aware guys, they do ship next day for your package to be there next day. But if there's shipping delays, you may be waiting longer. So first thing I got from them was this no shell pumpkin seeds. And these are resealable bags, but I'm not a big fan of them to be honest with you guys. So I will probably end up pouring these into jars because it's easier to get them out of jars than it is this bag. But um, they are resealable bags, so that's nice. Next thing I picked up was this molten milk powder and I thought this would be fun for desserts to put in like milkshakes or cookies or whatnot. They do have recipes on their website of things you can use these for and that's actually where I got the idea for cookies. But um, I thought molten milk powder would just be a fun dessert thing. They also sent me some information about a few of the things that I bought which I found very interesting because I didn't know anything that was on here. So I found that really helpful. Next thing I bought was organic cocoa powder. They do have organic and non-organic on their website. I tend to buy just whatever's cheaper. And by the way, this is their one pound bag. So all of this is just one pound of that. This is what melted and I wrote them about it. I'm still waiting to hear back. I have bought organic walnut date rolls. But they are, they're just gooey now. So I'm not going to eat them. I don't trust them. Melt it. So we're going to leave that off to the side. And I'm going to hope that they uh, reimburse me for that. 
The next thing I picked up was red lentils. I picked up a one pound of them. And this is something that we had like few times before. I really don't know how to make it or anything. And it happens to be one of the things that they gave me information on, which I'm very thankful for. But these red lentils are really healthy for you. They're 13 grams of protein, 9 grams of fiber, 180 calories per serving. So they're pretty healthy for you. I'm trying to incorporate this into our diet. So I bought them. And by the way, guys, I say that this is bulk for me because at my local grocery store, you can't buy this big bag of cocoa powder. It's always like a small little container. So for me, this is bulk. I also, I also bought these as a snack for me. I already opened the bag. Nobody else likes these. I'm the only one that does, but you know what? Sometimes you need to treat yourself. These are circus peanuts. Um, I used to love circus peanuts when I was little. I still love circus peanuts. So I bought myself a one pound bag of them. Uh, from my memory, I think they were rather cheap and that's why I bought them as a treat for myself, but I did buy them as a treat for myself. And then I bought this heavy five pound bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips. So this is definitely bulk. This is not how you get them at your grocery store, or at least not how I get them at my grocery store. But we have been going through chocolate chips like crazy. Rather we're putting them in at breakfast or we're putting them in dessert. We are using chocolate chips like crazy. So I was okay with getting this big bag. I did open it because I want to make sure it wasn't melted like the date rolls and they weren't. They were perfectly fine. These are also open, but this is the last thing I bought from them. So this is dark chocolate cover almonds, one pound bag. They are extremely good. That's why they're already open. Um, I highly recommend them. All right, so let's move on. Another thing that I would like to buy in bulk, but I'm still not sold on doing it yet, is honey. So honey is a good alternative to like actual sugar, actual sugar like this. If you want to sweeten the dessert or anything, it's a healthier alternative. So um, I'm debating on buying honey in bulk. And if I do, I would buy it off of Etsy because there's a lot of honey farmers on there. Definitely check out Etsy too if you're looking for certain things in bulk. I don't think there's any honey farmers around me, but I could be wrong. There probably is. We have so many farms around here, there probably is a honey farmer. Either way, I'm still figuring out if honey is something I want to buy in bulk. So for right now, I did go on to Etsy and I bought a pint of honey from one seller. We have been going through honey quite often, again, as a sweetener for a lot of things. Um, so I'm checking out this guy right now. This is wildflower honey and it has the comb in there, which I thought was really cool. I think it just looks cool to be honest with you guys. So um, we're going to see what we think about this and then decide in the future if we want to buy honey in bulk. But honey is another thing that just you buy it in bulk and it saves you in the long run, but up front it could cost a pretty penny. One more thing that I have found that really works for me and my family is that if I do put snacks in the jar like this and then I put them on my countertop, they tend to get eaten way quicker than if I leave them in the bag and I put the bag in my cabinet because nobody really digs around in the cabinet to look for a snack. If you're looking for a snack, at least in my household, it's normally like a quick snack, like you're looking for something quick. So if I just have a jar of nuts on the counter, it tends to get eaten way quicker than if I have a bag and it's sitting in the cabinet. It also helps me guys when I'm making dinner, if I can just look on my counter and see what I have there and I don't have to dig around, I'm really bad at meal planning. I used to meal plan all the time, but I don't anymore. Um, if I could just see what I have on my counter, it gives me better ideas. It makes dinner a lot easier. Um, this also helps me out with things like making dinner or desserts, even desserts. I'm just going to put the jars all in this bucket. This bucket normally carries my lids to my jars, but it's going to help me carry all these jars back right now. Okay, so we're on my counter now. I don't mind all of this. These are all of the dessert kits that I told you guys about in my last video. They're really, really good. Um, but here we go. I tend to keep all of my jars lined up on the top of my um, countertops. Just easier to see things that way.
And I do try to keep like all the stuff together, like the nuts together. These are energy squares that I also bought from nuts.com. Our rice is together, our pasta is there. So this is the only jar it doesn't match for now because it is our honey. Our lentils will probably go right here next to the pasta. Here goes another jar of nuts. This is, this is powdered sugar. I normally would put this in a plastic container, but um, I didn't have much left, so I just stuck it in here. These plastic containers tend to stay right up in my cabinets. They fit very nicely between the cabinets. Um, I actually have three of them up here. Oh, I have flour too. So even though I keep the bulk flour down the basement, I fill up one of these containers with the flour every time I need it and I take it up so that I'm not running up and down every time I need flour. So I have brown sugar, flour, and then regular white sugar in here. Just like the jars, I feel like the plastic containers make it easier for my kids to pour their cereal in the morning. A lot of the times when we just leave boxes, they leave the boxes open and the cereal goes bad, it goes stale, and then nobody eats it. I found them containers to work really well because they could just pour it and then close it again. They know how to close them containers, it's not that hard. So um, I have found them really, really helpful throughout the years. I've had the plastic containers longer than I've had the mason jars and all, and I do recommend them, but I am a little curious if they are considered food safe, because they don't say it. Do they have to say it? I'm not sure. Let's bring these buckets down my basement, and I'll show you our flour and how we're going to store it now. I went to go edit this video, and the last file of this video was completely corrupted. So I have to do the ending all over again and show you guys, which is fine, because I do have some things I want to clear up that I said in the video, which, I don't know. Let's just start where I left off. I was coming down here and showing you guys these wooden shelves that we have down our basement. We have quite a few of them. We got them for free when somebody moved. Here goes more of our rice that we just keep down here. Um, we got these shelves for free and we do stock food. The way that we stock food is on a rotation basis. So when we get new food, I go on the other side of the shelf and I push the old food to the front. Same thing with all of these shelves. Right now it's not organized as much as I would like, but that's because we've been down here doing so much and getting so much that I have not kept it organized. I'll get lids to the buckets in. Last time we only had the buckets. In this five gallon bucket is our 25 pounds of flour. I keep saying sugar for some reason. It's not sugar, it's flour. Um, it's not 25 anymore. Like I said, we have took some up already, but this is how we're storing it now. i am be honest with you guys, I don't remember what I was saying in the last part of this video. I know I was showing you guys the flour. I was showing you guys how we stock food down the basement and how it's on a rotation basis. But I, for the life of me, cannot remember what else I said. I've been videotaping videos constantly, but I haven't been that good with uploading them. Um, so I have quite a few videos that are kind of backlogged that I really should get out to you guys. Um, but I don't remember what else I want to say to you guys. Guys, that is what we do to try to save on our food bill. It does cost us a little bit more up front, but it has been saving us in the long run. So I'm going to go for now, guys. I hope that you guys have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.